So this is our new topic 4-9, understand patterns to write and solve equations. Uh, we will also uh, work with graphs and talk about the point slope formula. So talking about some of those things that you'll see um, in seventh and eighth grade. So this lesson will cover two standards, 6EEC9 and 6RPA3A. Objectives, we wanna analyze the relationships between variables and tables by using tables. And we want to write multiple equations to represent the relationship between variables. Uh, and then later in the next lesson, we'll talk about uh, relating tables and graphs and equations because they're all really one. So we have here a table and we have a relationship between circles and we have squares. So the number of circles versus the number of squares. So we have, we see the relationship right here in figure one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares to one circle. So we put that in the table eight and one. And then when we have two squares, I mean two circles, one, two red circles, we have 10 total squares. So when we have three circles, how many squares will we have? We can just count at this point. And if we count all of the squares, we'll end up seeing 12. And here's the next relationship, when figure four, when we have four circles, how many squares will we have? If we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. When there are four circles, we have 14 squares. Five circles, so we have to figure out what is the relationship between circles and squares, and we'll talk about that in a second. So basically, every time we add a circle, we're ha we have to add two squares because we have one here and one here. So when we have this one circle, we have to put a square on the top and the bottom of the circle to complete the figure. Over here, when we have two circles, we have to put two on top for this first circle and then two more for the second circle. So if we have five, or we can just add two more here. So basically every time you add a circle, you're gonna add two more squares. So the next number is 16. And if we're adding another circle, we need to add two more squares to go with, to cover up the top and the bottom. So we'll get 18. So this is the relationship between X and Y. So we can say that uh, the number of circles is gonna be independent. So last lesson, we talked about the independent variable and the dependent variable. And the independent variable is the, the a quantity that can stand alone. And the Y in this case is gonna depend on the number of circles. So we can say that Y is the dependent variable. Why does Y depend on the number of circles? So Y depends on the number of circles because if you add another circle, you have to add two more squares. If you add two more circles, you have to add four more squares. So the number of squares is dependent upon the number of circles. So we can say that the number of squares is the dependent variable and the independent variable is gonna be the number of circles. So if we were to cover up or take out the circles, so here we're looking at figure one right here. If we were to cover up, take all of the circles out, how many squares will we have? We will have one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you have no circles, you're gonna have a total of six squares. So if we wanted to write an equation here, we would say that y, which is y is represented by the number of squares, is equal to, or the number of squares is two times the number of circles, because we have to add two, plus six. And where did the plus six come from? When we covered up those, uh, that circle right here, when we covered up the circle, we saw that there were six squares. So that is the y-intercept, and we're gonna talk more about that, what that means uh, shortly. All right, so uh, y is six when there are no circles, which we just showed. So the y-intercept, what does intercept mean? So when I hear the word intercept, I think of football, interception, coming in and, or going across, cutting something off, maybe. So 
what is the y intercept is where the line pass through the y axis. So remember if you can if you can show a relationship, you can show the relationship in a table. Sometimes the relationships are proportional, sometimes they are not. We talked about uh, the qualifications to represent proportional relationships. We'll talk about them again uh, later on. So the line will pass through the y axis at zero. So basically you will not move left or right. You will go up six units. So the y-intercept, which is this six right here, that's where the six came from. So if we were to use the equation y equals two times x plus six, where y is the y-coordinate, uh, two is the constant rate of change. So we add uh, two, time, two squares times x is equivalent to, uh, well, plus six is equal to y. So x is the x-coordinate and six is the y-intercept. All right, so if we were to put a zero in for x, we see that y, which is the number of squares, is six. Remember when we covered up this right here and we saw six, that's how we got the y intercept. So when the x, which is the circles, increased by one, the number uh, y, which is the squares, increased by two, that's where we get our constant rate of change from. So our constant rate of change is two times X. All right, and that is this. The next one. All right. Use a table to write any equation that represents the relationship between two quantities. So if we look at the pattern in the table, uh, we can figure out the relationship between x and y. So if we look here, it says x, the x values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The y values, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So when, when x is 0, y is 3. When x is 1, y is 4. When x is 2, y is 5. You can graph the relationship to try to figure out uh, what is the equation to represent it, or you can write it down, write it in words first, and then change those words into equations. We kind of did that with percents when we talked about changing a percent question into an equation. So this is the same kind of concept. So if we look here at the relationship, we can see the number, if we write the words first, the number in the X column plus the value three, is, that's our equal sign, the number in the y column. So we can change that into an equation. So we want to write x, instead of writing the number in the x column, we will write x plus 3 is equal to, or is, that's the equal sign, equal to, instead of writing the number in the y column, we will put y. So x plus 3 is equal to y will be our equation. And if we want to write that in a point slope formula, which is y is equal to m times x plus b, then we would write y is equal to x plus 3. When y is the y coordinate, x is the x coordinate, m is the constant rate of change in eighth grade. That's what we, when we call it in sixth grade, it's the unit rate, constant rate of change. Seventh grade, they're going to call it a uh, constant of proportionality, still the unit rate. In eighth grade, they're going to call it slope. It's still the unit rate. It's still called constant of proportionality. So as you progress through the grades, they're going to call uh, this constant rate of change that we call unit rate something different. But if you know they all mean the same thing, you can easily transfer what you're learning in sixth grade to seventh and eighth grade. Uh, B is called the y-intercept, and that's where your line passes through the y-axis. So if x is zero, what is y? So in this case, we have uh, when x is zero, y is three. So this line will pass through the y-axis at zero, three, and not zero, zero. So this, this relationship between x and y is already eliminated uh, as a proportional relationship because 
it does not pass through the origin zero zero. So we kind of talked about the, the three quant the three things that you need in order to represent a proportional relationship. Pass through the origin zero zero. Linear increases at a constant rate. So since this relationship between x and y does not pass through the origin zero zero, we can say this is not a proportional relationship. How do we know it does not pass through the origin zero zero? Because when x is zero, you will not move left or right which means you're gonna go up or down along the y-axis. And in this case, when x is zero, we have to go up three units. So this line, this relationship between x and y will pass through the y-axis at zero, three, and not zero, zero. So if we wanted an equation to represent this in the point slope formula, you will write y equals one times x plus three. So if we were to substitute a zero in for x, we will get y is equal to three. So there is no way that the y-intercept, the y-intercept must be zero and, and it's three. So there, this is not a proportional relationship. And remember, you can put a, a, magic, a one in front of your variables so you can see what's going on. So here, instead of writing y equals one times x, you can write y equals x plus three. Another way you can write it, if you were trying to graph the relationships, you can write y equals one over one times x plus three. Now you wouldn't write that. This is the one that you would use to graph the relationship. So since m, which is the constant rate of change, the unit rate, the slope, you will rise three, you will rise one in this case and run three. So rise one and one three, put your point. Rise one, sorry, rise one and run one, put your point. Rise one and run one, put your point. So we're gonna talk more about that uh, in this same lesson, probably on a different day. So here is our equation. So if we were to use this table right here, instead of writing, so these are our x values, 0, 1, 2, 3. So instead of writing our x values, you will put an x because this part of the relationship is represented by x. And then since this second part says plus 3, we'll keep that plus 3 consistent. Then we will put our equal sign. And then if we look here, we can see this 3 for these numbers here came from the y value. So instead of writing the y values, we will put the variable y. So whatever value that we put in for x, we can get the y value by using this function, y is equal to uh, three plus x, or x plus three is equal to y. So you can substitute whatever value you'd like in for x, let that value represent your x coordinate, and then uh, you'll get your y-coordinate, then you can graph the relationship from that. Use the table to relate the independent variable x to the dependent variable y. First, drag tiles to describe the relationship in words, then drag tiles to form an equation. So this is kind of what we performed in the previous question. So we have to first use this table over here and try to figure out what is the relationship between this x value and this y value. And usually the x value is going to be your independent variable and your y value is going to be dependent, which means it depends on the value of x, usually. So if we look here, when x is 0, y is also 0. When x is 1, y is 3. So we have to figure out how do I start with a 2 and end up with a 6? How do I start with a 3 and end up with a 9? We can't really use 0 and 0, or how do we can put... So this has to be some type of, we don't know. We can't really use that. One. So if we think though, we can say that one times three is equal to three. We can say that two times three is equal to six. Three times three is equal to nine. Four times three is equal to 12. And five times uh, three is equal to 15. So if we have our, Value. So now we can use the words the number in the the number in the x column times because all of these we have times three times three is equal to the number in the y column. Now we can change that same those same words into an equation. So x times three is equal to y. So instead of writing the number in the x column, we will write x. Instead of writing the number in the y column, we will put y. And that's that equation. Now, if we wanted to write this in a point slope formula, y is equal to mx plus b, 
where Y is your y-intercept, M is your constant rate of change, your slope, your unit rate, constant of proportionality, where X is the x-coordinate, B is the y-intercept. So this is our equation right here. Y is equal to three times X. Y is equal to three times X. We got that from this, the words. You could also write it as Y is equal to three times X plus zero. So if we write it out like this, we can see that the y-intercept is zero, which means if we were to substitute a, a zero in for X, we will get three times zero, which is zero, and then we will be left with nothing else. So when y, when x is zero, y is also zero, which is why we have this relationship zero, zero. So we can conclude that most likely this is a proportional relationship. If we wanted to use the equation to graph it, we will have to change this three into a fraction by putting it over one because the slope tells us how to rise and uh, which means how far do we go up and down the numerator? So we will go up three. And then how far will we go left and right? Uh, which is one. So the slope is rise over run. So the numerator tells you how far to go up or down. Um, in this case, this is a positive number. So we're gonna go up three. And then the denominator tells us that we're gonna run one. So if we wanted to graph this relationship in a table, we will uh, first, well, actually you can graph the ordered pairs, but I'm gonna use the equation because we already know how to graph ordered pairs. So I would start at, uh, start with when X is zero. When X is zero, Y is zero. So my first point will plot here at the origin zero, zero. My second point, so I'm gonna use my slope. I start at my Y intercept, which is zero, zero. I'm gonna rise three and one, run one, and that's how I'm gonna plot my point. So I'm gonna rise three. So this is zero, uh, one, two, three. So I'm rising three and I run one. Notice that is where I will put my second point. From that same point, I'm gonna rise three, one, two, three, slope is rise over run, and then I'm gonna run one. So I'm gonna put my next point here. Then I'm gonna do the same thing from that same point. I'm gonna rise three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna run one. So this line or these points show the relationship and I can draw a line. I'm not gonna to try to draw it because I know it's gonna be well, a raggedy one. So anyway, if I were to draw this line as best as I can, the line will look like this. And then you will put a uh, arrow at the end and this will go infinite in this direction so I put the arrow there so this line shows the relationship between X and Y for this table so notice that these are the order pairs so this is 0 0 this is 1 3 this order pair right here is 2 6 and this one is 3 9 you can also so basically you can use the table and you can use the equation that you made. So in eighth grade, you're gonna focus on this equation, y equals mx plus b, when you have to rise and run uh, to graph the relationship between x and y or between your two quantities. So same concept, uh, different vocabulary words, but you should be able to answer it. So is this a proportional relationship? Absolutely, this is a proportional relationship because right here we can see the line passes through the origin zero, zero. It increases at a constant rate, which is three over one or three. So for every, uh, the, y, the y value times three is equal to, or the y value is three times the x value. And then we have it's linear, which means we have this straight line. So yes, this shows a proportional relationship.